I was invited to go on someone's podcast this weekend. I'm still considering it, although I'm just not really sure how much I really you know, want to be doing podcasts or popping on people's live streams. You know, it, there is, of course, the ever-present drive to get more and more exposure. I must have exposure. <laughs> but um, I'm also not terribly interested in, like, you know, like being uh, someone's talking head for arguments. So, I don't know. I'm thinking about it, but kind of sliding towards negative. The topic, though, was supposed to be, you know, like the, uh, the, the old days of the satanic panic and modern parallels to what's going on in D&D now. Um, I guess I could talk a little bit about that. Kind of a segue into, like, a, a larger subject that's kind of I've touched upon numerous times and might eventually, I guess, need to just make a video on. There is an irony... Uh, to the whole thing. And it's not just in D&D &D and role-playing games. Uh, it, it, this has kind of been an ongoing thing within, you know, like, nerddom. Uh, since I was a kid, and from what I can tell, probably extends to beforehand. Uh, the Satanic Panic and the, uh, the current, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know, threat of boycott if uh, X amount of diversity is not included uh, kind of stuff. They're both related to each other and also not related to each other. Uh, there, there's been debate about uh, racism and depiction of racism and how, uh, you know, like the rule system is framed around differences in player character races and all that kind of stuff and, and whether or not that translates to giving people racist impressions about genetic determinism and all that other sorts of stuff in real life. Uh, th these arguments have, have been with role-playing games since the beginning, I'm pretty sure. Um, and in a weird way, and, and the thing that kind of ties it in with Star Trek and a few other things, Lord of the Rings also, is that uh, whether or not it was intended by the people who designed these games, uh, especially with Dungeons and Dragons, it doesn't really apply to all games. A lot of it depends on like what exactly the players are allowed to play. But with D&D, you have something kind of similar going on with what you have in The Lord of the Rings and in Star Trek, and that which you are having a uh, deliberately grouped uh, set of diverse characters who are going on adventures together uh, for common cause. Uh, often, you know, with, with some sort of historical baggage uh, between them, in many cases, uh, and learning to ignore that or overcome it and become friends anyway, and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, to which extent there might be racist themes in these various works are, are, especially with Star Trek, intended to be there so that these characters can explore them uh, while still, like, showing, like, a more unified, uh, universalized humanity. Because, you know, like, using the D&D &D example, uh, humans are all just the one race, and the difference in race in that game is whether or not you're an elf or a dwarf and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, this, this has kind of a dual effect. Uh, it, it, it depersonalizes the racist stereotypes by having them be packaged in a non-human form while having all the humans being bundled together and all being kind of neutral to each other in that fashion. Uh, also depicting humans in, in settings where there are distinct non-humans, uh, you know, yeah, like, you know, our, our minor little color differences and historical differences pale in comparison to the differences even between human and Vulcan despite looking very similar and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they are distinctly a true other in a way that we're, whereas humans might otherize each other, it, you, you, you're never really truly the other. Yeah, you know, you're just being treated as such by one group or another. Um, so, like, inherently, D&D &D is based on an anti-racist message. Uh, you know, similarly, uh, you know, there's, there's, over the years, there's been a lot of people who've thrown a lot of hate at the game Rifts. Uh, Going back to its beginnings of people being uncomfortable with the coalition uh, and its fascist, its its openly, overtly, not subtly fascist Hitlerian overtones, and the fact that some of them are even allowed to be used as player characters. 
Uh, people have been uncomfortable with that, and there have certainly been people who have run and played those games who have misinterpreted exactly what that was trying to say and have been playing them as if they were the heroes and good guys. The thing is, though, is the, the intention that's implied throughout the books, though, is that, uh, you know, coalition characters are just like one amongst many of a group that is otherwise extremely diverse, full of aliens and people who practice, you know, mysterious alternative lifestyles, you know, magic users and psychics very much being kind of a uh, uh, analogy uh, for, you know, LGBT type stuff um, in its own way. Since it's a permutation, a, to a you know, top of a character's class uh, that has less to do with the character-specific race kind of a thing. Uh, and, you know, and how, like, in the Coalition, they're also either, like, tightly controlled and monitored or outright banned entirely. Uh... So, like, you know, the thing is with Rifts is that, like, you know, having Coalition characters, the point to them is that you're supposed to be playing through what can basically be said, like, denazification. You're you're playing through these people who are brainwashed by this, you know, uh, uh, system that has, like, you know, demonized these people that they've never actually had a chance to meet or interact with. And then as they meet and interact with them, they realize that they were lied to and they eventually are supposed to overcome and reject uh, you know, the, 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 the false morals uh, that the coalition had implanted in them as child and as children and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it is a distinctly an anti-racist game. Uh, and yet, though, because it's never really quite spelled out like that, and the book's telling you that this is what's going on, the author himself might not realize that's actually what he was doing. Uh, there's a common thing throughout a lot of different types of art, writing art, painting art, acting, like, people don't always see exactly what it is they're creating. Uh, even, even after it's done, you know, they, they might not necessarily really see what it is that they have made, you know, that, that's kind of for the, the, the masses to decide in, in many ways. Uh, you know, as soon as, as soon as your work of art is done, you know, death of the author is complete, uh, sort of a thing. So, like, you know, uh, whether or not, you know, Gary Gygax or Kevin Simbieta intended these games to be vessels for, like, a subtle anti-racist indoctrination in the players, uh, to which degree, you know, it succeeds or fails based on exactly what the Dungeon Master is doing, or also, like, you know, the intelligence level and empathy and just how thick as a brick the player might be to, you know, pick up on these things. Uh, you know, in some ways, the fact that, you know, they were marketed towards children as much as they have been probably waters down a lot of that stuff because there's a lot of things that you just can't be too implicit about. Uh, but also, like, you know, role-playing games emerged during this this post-Star Trek time period in the 70s, you know, where the, 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 the dawn of the Jim Henson era, you know, where Generation X and below were going to be raised on children's program that programming that was supposed to teach us, you know, to be more accepting of others and nicer and kinder to the environment and all that kind of stuff. And in many ways, what we are experiencing now is, you know, just the natural result of 50 years of that where, you know, what, two and a half generations down the line as we, we currently mark generations uh, of, you know, like deliberately like, you know, raising kids, uh, you know, to have, egalitarian cosmopolitan accepting ideas and so of course it's gotten increasingly prevalent and uh the level of acceptance has become wider and wider than where it initially started to some degree the fact that that we're that there's this final wall of resistance of just there's this this final core of uh the other for a lot the other older traditional way of looking at life uh that just won't budge, that was to be expected, that we were going to reach that point. And it's at this point where I think the whole thing in terms of, you know, America in particular, or the West's, uh, you know, like kind of long conversation with itself about, about racism, its own past is, is kind of, that, that's why it's come to a head, because this is kind of the point where like, you have to learn how to negotiate settlement with, with, you know, the remnants of the tradition, like they're, they're not just going to spontaneously become enlightened by being yelled at. Um, 
you know, people have to have their own internal changes. And so you reach a certain point where you've achieved victory, but it's not going to be total victory. You're going to have to be patient and kind, which is hard when you feel like, you know, the people on the other side have hurt you in the past. Uh, but, you know, as, as much as uh, John Stewart seemed perplexed about the fact that some people have to just like show the better grace, it like, like yeah, otherwise, you, uh, if you at the very tail end, you start acting shitty and revengeful, you've just undermined uh, all the groundwork you made to get your, your, yourself there, and you put yourself at risk of unzipping the entire thing. To put it bluntly, if there is no way for the white race to be redeemed, then there is actually no real motivation to be better now, is there? And so, in so far that we've gone to a great amount of effort to try to reprogram an entire fucking generation of children to be less racist, be less homophobic, be more open to other religions and be more secularly balanced. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to ever get any better than we are right now. Uh, and this is not to like say that we're just supposed to give up and, you know, like there, there are still a few last remnants of things that need to be, you know, like fixed so that we actually have, you know, the kind of fairness and, you know, equality that we so love to preach about to ourselves. Uh, but uh, you can't dictate terms to people and demand punitive action and a total surrender without giving them a budge on anything. I'd done a video the other day about uh, John Stewart's recent uh, episode on racism. And, the, you know, I like the whole like, interview he had with Cory Booker and stuff. It was, it was his panel interview that I take issue with because of the whole way it was framed. Uh, and just, uh, you know, the, the immediate accusations and the unwillingness to, like, listen or budge is the problem. Uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Their conservative guest was willing to make concessions. He was willing to agree that, yes, you know, there are still problems in the housing industry and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, when someone does that, that's part of a negotiation process. And your answer back to that is to concede something to them whether you like it or not uh that's how it works something has to be given up and i'm certainly not the one to say what that is but the left's going to have to give up something if they want the right to give up something and there can be any sort of actual healing of any sort in this country so we can move forward without things going bad i think as we can all see in Eastern Europe, if you look at a video of recent events over there, and then imagine what all that would be like over here on this side of the planet, you know, uh, you know, perhaps uh, yelling at people who are, you've already been back into a corner and that you are afraid of because, you know, of, of you know, their uh, uh, fact that they're a bit more favor to, uh, favorable towards, you know, uh, you know, using sorts of weaponry that uh, you yourself find distasteful. Well, you know, uh, maybe it's time to chill a little bit, you know. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to, you know, like egg them into the thing that you think they're just being paranoid about. If someone's being paranoid and you think they're being unrationally paranoid and that paranoia is about you, then if you're actually concerned about it, then you should check your behavior a little bit and try to calm them down. Regardless of how you feel about people, whether you like them or you hate them, we all have to fucking live together. Uh, as, as much as people might like to, to play pretend and act like they would like to see some sort of bloody communist revolution in this country or some sort of version of the, the Night of Long Knives, uh, you're not actually going to care much for yourself afterwards and what you have to live with. And like I said, you will have unzipped all the hard work that was put into getting us to this point where you can reach a point of final negotiation of terms. You're going to throw it out because you're going to demand a complete and total surrender. Once again, look at Eastern Europe. You know, uh, Russia's czar demands, you know, just like, just here's this list, do everything we want and we'll stop uh, bombing you. And uh, Ukraine is like, yeah, you know, we, we, we can't agree to all this. This is too much stuff. And so the fighting continues. Uh, you, you, you have to be willing to make concessions if you're going to be able to negotiate yourself out of a thing. And, uh, you know, to a degree, you know, like yelling at people, especially in nerd circles, 
like like these are all people who are naturally attracted to all these various genre fiction expressions, be it shows, books, games, whatever, that have already been imparting all sorts of societal messages that you agree with, and now you're going to nitpick them and tell them that these things that we're teaching them to be less racist are racist, or sexist, or homophobic, or ad infinitum. I mean, like, in terms of policies, I am entirely on the left side. I want the same world. But I find it more important uh, to be, uh, you know, actually get to a solution and uh, not just uh, make a show of, like, how great I am. So, you know, call me whatever you want. Argue as much as you want. All I'm trying to say is that Unless you, you want to become the very villain that you despise so much, you're going to have to learn how to play nice and stop actively antagonizing people. You've already won. You, like, you're just punishing them now. And they know it and they see it. And, you know, there's a point where you're just not going to take it anymore. So, you know, as much as people might say it's like it's only the right wing that's worried about a civil war. Well, like it's the actions of the left that are building them into that mind state. And so, you know, think about what you're doing and saying. Uh, Jesus Christ. Stay waspinated.